Okay, we're going to uh, solve this problem, and it's a kinematics problem. I'm just going to write the problem out, and then we'll uh, figure out how we're going to solve it. So this this is going to uh, require us to use um, both our kinematics formulas and uh, some vector addition. This goes like this. Um, car, I'm going to paraphrase a little, has an initial velocity. of 20 meters per second to the west, sorry, to the east. Okay. It comes to a stop over four seconds, I believe. Okay, and then it says it turns right by 90 degrees. then accelerates. Now we're going to imagine the car just can turn on a dime, right? It can't, doesn't actually travel around a corner, just rotates to the right. Then accelerates um, at 2 meters per second squared for 8 seconds. Okay. And then, oops, change color by accident. Then comes to a stop over the next three seconds. Okay, and then the question says, find the total displacement Okay, so the goal here is to turn this into a um, vector addition problem and how we're going to look at this is to grab ourselves some arrows and say, okay, so in the first part, a vehicle is traveling um, to the east at 20 meters per second initially, but it's slowing down to zero meters per second as it's traveling along. So at the beginning, you know, it's covering lots of distance in each interval of time, and then it's going to come slowly slowly, slowly to a stop. Then it says it turns right. So from the car's perspective, that's going to be towards the south. Okay. And then it speeds up, oops, speeds up for a certain amount of time. So it gets faster and faster for a certain amount of time. I got to make this straight. Okay. And then it slows down for an amount of time. Okay. It's displacement then going to be this. Somewhere down here. All right. So let's just go back in and say, so here it's going slow, getting faster, 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 faster. Then getting slower, 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 slower. All right. So essentially we have to do three bits of math before we can even get to making this vector problem. Right. So in the first section, right, we have accelerated motion. <clears throat> Initial velocity is this way. And seeing as how we're slowing down, right, we're imagining we're pushing against this motion. So our acceleration is leftward. All right? So what we need to do here is we need to use the formula that involves accelerated motion to find a displacement with accelerated motion. Okay? So we're here. So my final velocity is zero plus my initial velocity, which was 20 meters per second, divided by two. And the time that happens over is four seconds. So the total distance that I covered here then is 20 divided by two, which is 10 times four. So it should be 40 meters. So that's 40 meters there. Okay, let's just make sure that we realize that when we have accelerated motion, in order to find displacement, you have to use this formula, right? It's, it's finding the area under a velocity time graph when you have a slope on the velocity time graph. Okay, so let's do the second part now. Let's find this. 
Ooh, I want to change the color. I don't like that color. Um, so now what it's saying is, so remember the car traveled here. Now it turned right. Now it's accelerating. So it accelerates at 2 meters per second for 8 seconds. OK. So we're going to have to find its final velocity. So that's going to be equal to its initial velocity plus the acceleration it has times the time. So in this case, the final velocity is 0 because it starts at 0 meters per second. And then it accelerates at 2 meters per second for 8 seconds. Sorry, meters per second squared times 8 seconds. So its final velocity then is 16 meters per second. Okay, that's just its final velocity. So let's write in what we know. Vi is 0. started at 0. Vf, right before it starts to slow down, is 16 meters per second. So this is accelerated motion again. So if we want to find the displacement, we have to use this formula again. So let's do it over here. Vf plus Vi over 2 times t. So Vf was 16. Vi was 0. Divided by 2. And the time that this happens over is 8 seconds. So we have 16 plus 0 divided by 2 is 8. 8 times 8 equals 64 meters. So we've covered 64 meters to the south. Okay. We're almost done. The last section is now this object slowing down, right? So it goes from 60 meters per second to 0 meters per second. So there's your final. So the last section here, um, Vf plus Vi, well, Vf is 0 meters per second. Vi was 16. OK, and that happens over from the problem 3 seconds. So 16 plus 0 is 16 divided by 2 is 8 times 3 is 24 more meters. All right. So now this is solving a displacement triangle, right? So we, we essentially have this now. We can look at it like this. We've got 40. Um, I actually don't want it to look like that. We've got 40 to the east, and what's 24 plus 64? 88. So 88 down. Okay. I don't know if that's quite the scale. I don't think it is. So we've got 40 meters, and we've got 88 meters. Okay. So now we've got a pith problem and a trig problem to solve. So there's my initial position. There's my final position. This is going to be the magnitude of my displacement. And I'm going to figure out what direction I'm actually going in. Let's put a theta there. We know a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or that c is the root of a squared plus b squared. Yeah, sorry, this is 88. That should be 88. So this is approximately uh, 97 meters. Okay. And the last thing we need to do is we need to get our direction out here. So theta is going to be the inverted tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. Theta will be. So we get about a rounded. Uh, roughly 66 degrees here. Okay, so that is 66 degrees south of east. All right. Now we had a little rule, didn't we? That when we get a number that's larger than 45, we like to take the smaller of those possible angles. So we're gonna actually look at this angle. So this one's 66. What would this have to be? Yeah, it's 24 degrees. So we'd actually call this 24 degrees east of south. So just to wrap it up then, to answer the final you know, overall question here, what we have is 97 meters, 24 degrees east 
Mexico South. So that kind of ties together um, some of the kinematics work that we're doing and some of the vector work that we're doing. So I just want to add a little extension on here. Okay, I just want to add a little extension. So here's what's going on. You start here at 20 meters per second, right? You end here at zero meters per second. How long did this take again? Okay, so you can very likely, without too much trouble, figure out what the actual acceleration was. You don't need it to solve the problem as it's written, but you could. Okay, then here you have eight seconds of speeding up from zero to 16 meters per second. Then essentially you're like slamming on the brakes. And in the last little bit here, the last three seconds, you come to a stop. So this is my extension on here. Can you draw for me? First a graph of displacement time, graph of velocity time, and a graph of acceleration time for the eastward motion, and then the exact same thing for the total southward motion. Correct. Treat them as two separate events. Draw a graph for this and a graph for this, or three graphs for this and three graphs for this. And it can be slightly rough if you want, but try to put in the important times if you can and make things match up the way that they should if you can. Okay, so uh, let's give this a try here. So the first scenario is, uh, and we'll write down the relevant information to kind of like help organize our thoughts. It starts going 20 meters per second to the east. Okay, then it slows to zero meters per second. Okay, it slows to zero meters per second. And that takes four seconds. So let's, let's plot that on a graph. Okay, so let's make our graph first. Put some nice axes. This axis is displacement. Or, uh, sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll start with a velocity time one because I think that's actually easier in this case. So we'll do a velocity time graph first. So here's velocity. It's measured in meters per second. Here's time in seconds, and we've got four seconds to work with. One, two, three, and four. Okay, and we want velocity v time. Here, right? Velocity versus time. Our initial velocity starts at 20 meters per second, and our final velocity is at zero. We have a constant acceleration throughout, and so we're going to plot on here this. Okay, perfect. So there we go. Now, the first question is what is the value of the area under this graph? How far did we go, right? That's what this is. So it's VF, sorry, VF plus VI, which is 20, divided by 2, which is 10, times 4 seconds. Under here, you should have a total area of 40 meters. So it goes 40 meters during the traveling, okay? It's going to the right, but slowing down. So now let's put in a displacement time graph, see what that's going to look like. Try to leave room for the acceleration time graph over here. All right, so we figured out that the total distance that it's going to cover is 40 meters, right? 0, 20, 40. This is displacement in meters, and this is the displacement. Actually, it's really a position. I should say it's a position time graph. It's position v time, and here's my time, and my time goes for four seconds. One. Two, three, four. All right. I'm going to be a little bit more careful here. So we're traveling to the right, originally fast. We're getting slower and slower and slower and slower. Okay? So thinking about that, we're traveling right and getting slower. Our acceleration must point to the left, right? Acceleration is like a push on the object, so the push has to be to the left. What that also means is the slope of this graph which gives us velocity, has to be getting lower. We're traveling right, but our slope is decreasing. So I want you to think about what this graph must look like. Okay, so here's the thinking on this, right? At first, at first you're covering a lot of displacement in a short amount of time, right? 
Then you cover a little bit less, then less. Finally, you stop. So you must have a graph that looks like this. By the end, the slope has gone flat, right? Whatever I get for slopes here at instantaneous moments in time translates to this graph over here. Okay, so last part now. Okay, so remember, this is our velocity time, this is our position time. Um, and the last thing we got to do is we got to do our acceleration time. Yeah. Okay, so in this case, do we have a positive or a negative acceleration? Okay, so if we look and we remember, right, how are these related? Well, the slope of a position time gives us velocity time. The slope of velocity time gives us acceleration time. So our changing from 20 to 0 over some time. So delta V over T, 20 divided by 4, should give us what? And actually, it's negative. It should be a negative value, right? Because it's, it's negative 20. Delta is negative 20 divided by 4. Negative 20 divided by 4 should be, you got it, negative 5. So we should have a horizontal line on here at negative 5. Okay, and that's our acceleration graph. So this is acceleration V time. There's A. There's T. There's negative 5. And that's meters per second squared. And we're done. Perfect. All right, so we're going uh, to look at the second part now. Whoa, we're going to look at the second part now. Okay, so for the second part, stay with me. I know it's long, but stay with me. It's worth it. We're learning. All right, so now, now we're going to try to follow what's happening here. You start at zero meters per second. You accelerate at two meters per second squared for eight seconds and end up at 16 meters per second. Okay, and in doing that, I believe you cover 64 meters, 64 meters, okay? Then you do something else. You change, you switch it up, and you do this. You travel from 16 to 0 meters per second over 3 seconds, and you cover 24 meters during that, okay? And while we're at it, we can figure out what the acceleration is, right? So it's, it's, and you know what? Let's just be careful here. Let's use correct terminology. We're going down, so we're going to actually label this as negative, right? I'm going to label that as negative 60 meters per second, okay? To zero meters per second. And that happens over three seconds, all right? So what would our acceleration be here then? It would be 16 divided by three, which isn't exactly nice, clean math. So we must have an acceleration of negative 5.3 meters per second squared here, assuming this is a positive one. Okay, so let's graph. Um, should we start with the velocity time? Yeah, let's start with the velocity time. Ah, uh, you know what? It doesn't really matter. Let's start with the let's start with the displacement time this time around. So we've got two things going on, right? First, we have speeding up, and then we have slowing down. We're always going south for a total of 88. Okay, so if that's the case, we've got to set this up like this, because we're going to be working in the negative displacements now, aren't we? So there's D, there's T. This is displacement versus time. Okay, so we're just considering this to be 0 meters, and down here we want this to be 88 total. And we need to have 11 seconds, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We'll add an extra one just to make it look nice. Um, and so what we're doing is we're speeding up to 8 seconds. So where's 8 seconds on here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 right here. So we're speeding up. And then we're slowing down to 11 seconds. And we know that at this time, right about here, we're at 64. So right about there is when we speed up to. So what's going to happen here is this. 
you're going to speed up to the left. Slow down to the right. Not the nicest graph. I'm going to try that again. It's hard to freehand with this thing. <laughs> but you get it, right? Speed up to the left and then slow down. And this is the magic tipping point, which is represented by that. Okay? So now let's do the velocity time graph. Okay, velocity time graph. Again, we're dealing in negative world here. So our velocity is always to the south. Okay? Velocity is always to the south. And what we have is we have a slow speed up and then a fast slowdown, don't we? So we have a slow speed up for eight seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At that point, we're going negative 16 meters per second. This is velocity. This is time. This is V versus T. Okay. And then we have one, two, three more seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right there. And that's there. Let's put that in. You do this for eight seconds. You speed up to negative 16, and then you slam on the brakes. One, two, three. And you come to a stop. Always traveling to the left, hence in negative land. Okay? This area should be equal to the 64. Oops. Equal to the 64 we had before. 64 meters is the area under here. And 24 meters is this area here. So now the acceleration time graph is slightly more interesting because we have two different ones. So here's acceleration, here's time. All right, our initial acceleration. <clears throat> negative two meters per second squared. That's the slope here. Delta V over delta T. And then we have a positive acceleration. 5.3 meters per second squared. And silly me, I put this as negative here. It's not negative, it's positive. Whoopsies. Just fix that. All right. So we have a negative two. That goes for eight seconds. And three more seconds of a positive 5.3. There. And what happens in between here? Well, a very fast switch in what we're doing happens here. Okay, so there's negative 2 meters per second squared. And there's 5.3 meters per second squared. Okay, and there it is. We've translated word problem to numbers to graphs. Is it easy to do? No. Does it take work? Absolutely. Am I going to give you practice on it? For sure.